Let's look at the code uh, for print sum in a slightly different way by making something explicit. If we go through the code, we can see that the, the code does something in the case of a result greater than zero, does something else if the result is not greater than zero but is less than zero, and otherwise, in the case in which neither of these two conditions is true, nothing really happens. So we're going to make that explicit. We're going to say here, otherwise, do nothing, which is exactly our problem. The code does nothing in this case where it should do something. So now let's look again at our test cases. Let's consider the first one, and I'm going to go a little faster in this case because we already saw what happens. If we execute the first test case, we get to this point, we execute this statement, and then we just jump to the end, as we saw. Now we, if we execute the second test case, we do the same, we get to the else statement, the condition for the if is true, and therefore we execute this statement, and we never reach this point for either of the test cases. So how can we express this? In order to do that, I'm going to introduce a very useful concept, the concept of control flow graphs. A control flow graph is just a representation for the code that is very convenient when we want to reason about the code and its structure. And it's a fairly simple one that represents statements with nodes and the flow of control within the code with edges. So here is an example of control flow graph for this code. There is the entry point of the code right here, then our statement in which we assign the result of a plus b to variable result, our if statement, and as you can see, the if statement has got two branches coming out of it because based on the outcome of this predicate, we will go one way or the other. In fact, normally what we do, we will label these edges accordingly. So for example, here, we will say that this is the label that is executed when the predicate is true, and this is the label that is executed when the predicate is false. Now at this point, uh, similar thing, statement five, which corresponds to this one, we have another if statement, and if the statement is true, then we get to this point, and if it's false, we get to this point. So as you can see, this graph represents my code in a much more intuitive way because I can see right away where the control flows while I execute the code. So we're going to use this representation to introduce further coverage criteria.